then we have uh, the requesting party, which is uh, Amanda Illing. She's the CEO of Hardwick Chambers. And we have Shai Wakasam, founder and uh, partner, runner of the CEO of Fortune Law. Then we have Winston Gordon, solicitor. And we have Nizar Pagani, um, who's also solicitor. But Winston's going to be playing the responding party, and Nizar is her lawyer. And so the brief that you have, should have seen, the background general brief, this is the brief that was used at the International uh, Chamber of Commerce in Paris, where they do the mediation competitions every year. And this is one of the best briefs that come out of 10 years of people writing some great briefs for them. So it's been tried and tested in the international scene. Each time is a different kind of result and a very interesting way in which it's been mediated. And today it's uh, John's turn to mediate and uh, display some great skills. And on a personal note, um, my journey into mediation began when I was a paralegal in Stevenson Harwood, working outside John's office. And one of the days, or every, every few weeks, John would disappear into a room for a whole <coughs> week. And Linda, who was his secretary at the time, I'd say, where's John gone? He's gone to a mediation. I had no idea what this was, having graduated from bar school at BDP almost 17 years ago. And then one day, I got to sit in for a part of a, a mediation with John, and it blew me away. And I think that's where I got the bug. So John, it's all your fault that I'm uh, <laughs> such an evan evangelical enthusiast about. We should have uh, left you in the corridor. You should have left you in the corridor. Yeah, I could have said a barrister and just litigated. But um, welcome, and we hope you enjoy it. And to all our um, followers and watchers on, on online today, welcome for joining us. We've got lots of people joining in today from around the world. And we know we've got a big group in Greece and Cyprus and India who've definitely come together to watch this simulation. So enjoy, and the best of luck to all of you. Uh, welcome to the mediation. Thank you for asking me to uh, uh, be the mediator today. I know you're very well versed in mediation, all of you, so I'm not going to say very much at all now by way of an introduction. Just one or two important points. The first of which is my function. Uh, I'm here to help you uh, settle the dispute. I'm not here to take views about who's right and who's wrong, let alone to make any judgments. Um, so you won't, you won't get out of me what I think. I may have thoughts about, about the rights and wrongs, but my sole function today is to help you achieve uh, a solution that brings an end to the, the dispute so you can all get on and do uh, more profitable things. Uh, the second thing I want to say is that today is a confidential occasion, uh, confidential between the parties, uh, not for disclosure to anybody other than the parties, uh, and also to use the legal jargon, it's without prejudice. And the advantage of it being without prejudice means that you can make concessions, make suggestions, make proposals uh, that if we don't reach a settlement, or even if we do for that matter, can, can never be revealed, uh, will never be known by any, any judge who, who comes to have a look at this afterwards. Uh, and then I think the last thing, although I usually say that and then think of something else, is that um, there aren't really many rules for today, apart from the ones I've just mentioned. Uh, and so if it's best for us to be together like this, discussing issues, we'll do that. Um, we'll almost certainly have some, some private sessions um, when I'm with just one party. Um, and I talked about confidentiality at the beginning. It's very important to stress that those private sessions are completely confidential to the party I'm talking to, and I will respect that uh, rigorously. Of course, you may be saying things to me that you want me to say to the, the other party, um, but I, it's my job to be sure I'm clear uh, about whether any particular part of our private meetings are, are for uh, uh, more public consumption. Um, but, but, but as I say, we can, we can do things as we want. If, if, if two lawyers want to have a chat, uh, or two clients want to have a chat without me or with me, um, and sometimes these are the Things are sorted out in the local pub when everybody gets as far away from the mediation as they can. But um, let's let's kick off together as we are. Uh, and what I'm going to do is to invite um, someone or both of you from from each side to just set the scene, to say what you'd like to say about the dispute, um, say what you'd like to say about a settlement if you want to. But that's that's up to you. You might want to keep that for the, the private conversations. But um, o over to you. Who's going to? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So just um, you know, uh, just to 
say, give a little bit of background to that, because I know you've read the papers already, but uh, I think it's important to do the sentencing in terms of what the actual issues are from, from our side. Um, so in terms of the actual sort of uh, facts, uh, you know, my clients are a group of individuals, and uh, they've got a collective interest in, in having purchased apartments off plan in a particular development. Now, um, the, uh, there, are, there have been arbitration proceedings started by my clients, um, and they've been stayed in the case now for quite a while. And Amanda um, has the authority to plan to go and settle this dispute if it's at all possible. So even though there are a number of parties on my side, um, we should have the requisite ability to, to come to an arrangement to go. And that was what was worked out by my clients here, on their behalf and on behalf of the clients in general. Um, so in terms of the dispute, um, development to itself has run into some uh, difficulties quite early on due to poor timing management and securing of materials and I don't think it's helpful to deal with those issues in, you know, in any detail at this stage but just to sort of explain where we are um, and also it's important it's also important to state that there have been a number of formal disputes that have arisen since my clients moved into the apartments so in essence the claims that have been brought by my clients are for specific performance for things that have been done which have not been done by the other side um, uh, including alterations and so on to the properties and um, I also understand that the other side has entered into arbitration proceedings of their own against their own suppliers so that's got to be taken into account uh, when we uh, discuss where we're going or where we're heading with this um, so although the clients have a collective interest in this dispute there are a number of clients within this group who have other claims and Amanda also has authority to settle those claims as well today if it's all possible. Um, so in terms of the three key areas and the issues, how can the issues of liability and contribution regarding the historic performance and development issues be resolved? That's the first thing that we're looking to, to look at. And the second thing is how are the issues and liability regarding future structural development issues, how can those be resolved and agreed? And then what should happen to the costs and losses to date? Um, and so my clients have requested this mediation under the ICC medi mediation rules. And we approach this mediation in the spirit of conciliation and with a view to try to uh, rather than debate the wrongs of what's happened so far, we would like to uh, find a workable solution to move forward. Um, and we look forward to hearing QBL's suggestions on how to resolve the dispute and to address the issues that we've identified as well. So thanks. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Do you want to add anything to that? Of course. Oh. I just wanted to add that um, uh, these are our dream homes. We've worked hard to live in this beautiful place and we've cut corners and we've not delivered on your promises, but we do want to live and enjoy our dream homes for the years to come, and that's what I hope we achieve here today. Thanks. Could I just ask one question? You, you made it clear that um, uh, Amanda's got authority. Mm -hmm. Just to help with the timing of this, uh, if there need to be communications with other people not here today, mm -hmm. um, is that going to be readily possible? Yes. On the telephone or? So we have one person in relation to, there's about three different uh, groups of people who are involved in yep. this, and we have one person representing each one of those groups who will be available on the telephone during the course of today. There'll be a questionnaire available. And, 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 and they have sufficient authority, authority and understanding yes, to deal with their group? I've seen that um, the documentation in relation to our people. Thank you very much. Over to you. Uh, can I start? Of course. Now, um, just to, not very, I'm not going to be very long. Say that uh, GPL is the family company. Have been building quality uh, condominiums on the island for a long time. Um, you know, it's across the generations that uh, the family now um, are across the generations in relation to, to GPL, and there are some family mem members that are on the island, and they obviously want to have this built here with the owners. Um, we are, we have to acknowledge that we are facing these claims, faulty claims, and they have gone into an arbitration. Four different arbitrators have now been appointed, and there is no consistency. So we can
could have walked him out. And we're well aware of that. Uh, so we are coming to this mediation today um, wanting to have resolution. Um, however, that will depend on the owners being reasonable and realistic. I'm very pleased to note that uh, Amanda has authority to settle on behalf of the other people, and that's to me a very good thing, and I hope that when we can have this negotiation. Just to say that um, Amanda mentioned that uh, my son deliver, didn't deliver what was promised um, and cut corners. I take exception to that. Um, I take exception to that. I would have thought so. Um, but the contract was clear. Um, we, as um, my son has said, the, the company has been carrying out these developments over many years. It's very well respected on the island. And the contract is fairly standard across the board, and they're very clear as well. So they knew what they were signing up for. They knew quality of the goods that they were getting. So let's just start from that point, I think. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Um, could I ask you one question, as I could have asked anyone really? I didn't have a chance because I, I, I averted a late uh, uh, appointment to talk to you beforehand, but one of the questions I would have asked, have there been any without prejudice conversations so far, or is this the first attempt to, to reach a, sort of a, a, a amicable solution? Um, do you want to say anything further, having heard what's what's been said on well, the side of the table or not? Obviously we're quite, I mean we're here, there are arbitration claims being issued, we're obviously in some, you know, uh, there's quite a, a lot of contentious issues and we are in disagreement on a variety of areas. So um, I'm really sort of guided by you as to whether you want to start taking issue by issue because obviously I can respond to Ms. R. No, uh, this, I wanted to do this sort of introductory, as it were, so if there's nothing particular you wanted to say at the, the level, I mean, you, you did say that your position anyway would be prefer not to debate the rights and the wrongs, but to move on to um, seeing whether a, a resolution can be found. It may be necessary for us to, to come back together and, and to debate some of the underlying issues if they are... Um, going to be very important to, to how, how people see the settlement. Um, but why don't we, we, we just see whether we can, we can start with, without doing uh, that. Um, and um, in, in the usual way, I'm going to suggest we, we, we break up now. Um, and um, I've asked you to start first. So perhaps I'll have a word mm -hmm. first with, with, um, um, uh, with, with the company. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what we're going to do, I'm going to ask you if you if you'd Absolutely. leave, yeah. um, and and I'll have a private word with them, and I'll try and be as swift as I can, so you're not you're not kept waiting and wondering what on earth's going on. Absolutely, thank, thank you. Jeff. time to think about what was said, but maybe nothing surprising was, was said from, from the other side of the, the table. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about how we, how we deal with things today? Are there matters you want to drill down to and, and, and talk about in terms of what has gone wrong or hasn't gone wrong, what, what, the, what the allegations are and why you say they're, they're, they're not, they're not um, uh, sound? Or do you want to move to, to looking at the the claims and seeing whether there are any that um, we, we could think about finding a solution to. How would you like to, to take it forward? Because we could go straight to you saying, well, claim one, we're not having any of that, but claim two we could we could live with, and then when we get to the money we could we, we do something, but not, not something else. How, how would you like to move forward? I don't want to rush you equally. I don't want to waste time talking about issues if we don't if we don't need to. Well I think I'd like to know um, what it is I, I may only get a repetitive statement but I'd sort of like to know uh, what it is that um, the claimants are pursuing. Now I know that um, some of the claimants have different claims uh, even though Amanda says she has the authority to um, actually um, settle on behalf of the other owners. 
but I would like to drill down into what those pens are. Um, some of those uh, pens are quite unrealistic, I think. Uh, you know, they, they've asked us to um, pay for any maintenance costs that exceed, I think it's uh, nine thousand five hundred dollars. I think the figure I was given well, was one thousand. Yeah. Um, so I think that. Some of the uh, rental claims, I think, are also totally unrealistic. <coughs> Again, they're far too remote. Wouldn't you agree, John? Well, I'm, I'm not going to, as I said, I wasn't going to um, form views about these things, but, but um, um, you all have obviously thought about that and given advice about, about that. Um, and of course, there is a remoteness argument, um, and, 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 and both parties will have to weigh, the, you know, the, the, the strength of that and, and what it does to the figures. Uh, what about the, the specific performance um, claims, which you which you didn't didn't mention? Uh, do you do you do you resist all of them, or uh, is this anything that can be can be done? In relation to them. I mean, again, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to labour the point, John, but um, the contract was very clear uh, on what they were getting in terms of construction. Um, now, they've said here that um, some of the sales representatives have uh, said certain things. Now, if somebody came back <coughs> and came to what agents said, they'd be claims all over the world, quite frankly. Um, but the starting point must and has to be the contract, and they can only rely on what's in that contract. specifications was very clear from the outset and as I've said and as Winston has said the company has done this for many many years and is very successful in its development and has ongoing developments as well um, so the paperwork is very sound and and just just looking at, at, at each individual um, claim for specific performance um, what you've just yeah. said Goes to the design of the of the sliding doors and the window system. Yeah. You say they uh, got what they bargained for. Is that correct? I think that's right. Yes. Um, in terms of the uh, walking to pole, poles by being told to be only five in pairs each. And and is the same true, or um, wholly or partly true, uh, for some of the other? What are described in here as improvements, the, the cracking to the external paving. Has that has the been? Is that a fact? Or has the paving? I think we have to accept that there has been some cracking uh, to the paving because um, there has been very few work yeah. on that. Um, so I think actually that part of the claim we are addressing. Yes, yeah. and, and, and the, if you're um, in fact prepared to uh, to undertake those works, the, the, the value of them don't matter. If, if, if the figure I've been given is is overstated, it's neither <laughs> here nor there, is it? If it's something that can be exactly. dealt with on the ground, exactly. as it were, rather than in terms of monetary compensation. Um, are, are, there, are there actually people on, on site doing that, that sort of work at the moment? And then you, you talked about the, um, the the unreasonableness of this of this capping. Um, is there a is there a figure that you would you would think is is is, is more reasonable? Well, I don't see why we should. Well, if, if we're um, yeah, if that what we say is that the developments are a, a standard where there won't be. Over that one thousand dollar figure. 
suppose arguments about indemnities are always slightly circular, aren't they? Because one side says it's yeah, not going to happen. And we're not going to give anything, and the indemnities are that sort. I think the documentation of a standard uh, service charge provisions, as you'd expect in any uh, development of this nature, um, and it's all depending on what works. I mean, we can't look into a crystal ball and say you know what's going to be required next year, five years down the line. But if we don't have sufficient funds to do that, the only people who are going to come back and complain uh, if we haven't sufficient funds to do it are the owners. Yes. And I suppose that is linked to, 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 to what you said in answer to my points about the, the specific performance claims yeah. that if, if one isn't, isn't a good claim under the contract, that's the end of that. And, uh, but if, if some snagging does need to be attended to on the, on the paving, it'll be attended to. And, and so that should do away with the, with the need to talk about an indemnity. So I understand your position on that. Um, and then, and then the, the rental uh, uh, claims. Is, is your position there that um, you would consider some some measure of compensation, but this is just inflated? I think it's going to. Would you like me to leave you to have a private word? At any time you should no, say no, that. No, that's fine. No, no. Um, as my clients obviously come in in the spirit of goodwill, yeah. um, and that's fine. But when owners come. Fanciful is the right word, but I mean, to say that we knew that they bought it for a certain purpose. Um, are we talking about the, the, the letting or the, the people two. that couldn't move in? So two this is two elements. Two elements. Let, let's break them down. Yeah. Let's let's talk about the the, the, the the letting on the buying them for an investment. Yeah. Well, and you say that's too too remote. I think that's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. Who they didn't they didn't notify the company in writing that that's what they were being bought for. Um, they, whether they told the sales representatives or not, we don't know, um, and what the sale guys told them. Is is, is there any law on the, on the, on on on, the, on on this particular question of whether, in these circumstances, um, uh, letting on is is reasonably foreseeable? Then everybody could say that if they couldn't move in, oh, we wanted it, we wanted, we bought it to rent it. We bought it to rent it, and we've lost out this amount of money. You must pay it to us now. But no, I don't. No, not not at all. And you don't think you don't think there's anything in the, the proposition that our court might might say that it's it's buying a property in this sort of location is likely to have the distinct possibility of it being an investment rather than a home. I thought that um, I thought most of the people that were buying these sorts of condominiums were in their holiday holiday home. Um, you know, they had a reason to come there to get away from the stress of life and to to. It's a very worthy objective, um, but 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 is it? I don't know what what a, what a judge would think about this, but isn't it? Isn't I don't it really care about that in the end. I, don't, I think it's really sloppy. Um, I think it's been tagged on, and you know, we're, we're not going to entertain that. I mean, a judge. Also, that I said yeah. we would be sorry, yeah, but we would be prepared to uh, look at settlement, but on the basis that it's it's reasonable. Yes, that's always in the eyes of the beholder, isn't it? Uh, reasonableness, but but I uh, know I understand that. I'm I'm just trying to to really test no, that. We've got a lot of claims. We've got a lot of yeah. claims. It's um, a lot of money. Yeah, I'm, I fully understand that. It, uh, we, we, with with your lawyer's help, you, you've got to uh, assess what, what a, a judge is likely to think is reasonable yeah. and not. And, and just picking up your holiday home point, uh, might not a judge think that um, it, it, it's, it's not unusual to, to purchase a property like this for both those purposes, to, to, to use it in the holidays when you want to, but when you're not using it, to, to rent it out they to the buyer. Liberation of sites like Airbnb and that sort of thing. I can certainly see that, but um, I'd need to take instructions. But uh, we certainly um, sort of discuss whether we think. John, this is. I mean, but when we're not going to have, have this, be pushed over, and you know, in, because we've come to mediation and because these arbitrage procedures, that, that you know, somehow it's a sort of open check. I've got that. 
I, 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 I could be on Sunday. Yeah. Let, let's park that one and let's talk about the other the other one where where you've got owners having to to, to live elsewhere. Um, I suppose you can't. Can you have it both ways? You can't say that the the subletting is 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 um, unusual and unreasonable. Um, um, and that's really for a home, and that they have to get somewhere else. Well, yeah, that, I mean, if that's a commercial decision, then for, for my client, we have to, we have discussed this, and it, it, it's not really something that we can give a, um, advice on to the extent where she's going to come to a decision based on what I'm saying. Okay, I've, I've got that. Well, look, um, sorry, let's just complete the list, and then and then I will I'll, I'll have a chat with the other folk see what, what they think about these things. And while I'm doing that, perhaps you could be um, thinking about it. And, and, and I, you know, I understand exactly where you're coming from, but uh, if you could just have a chat about, about some of these things further, and we can see where, where we get. Let's finish the list, though. Damages for distress and inconvenience. Mm. The usual. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what I thought you might say about that one. Yeah. And, and then, and then their, their costs. And similarly for how they calculate interest. Yeah. And then the other cost, really, they've, they've just pulled these figures out from the. I'm not sure we've had any very much in the way of evidence, to be honest. No, where do they get these figures for holiday lets and occupancy rates and that sort of thing? I mean, 75% is quite high. Yeah, and, and presumably being in the development business, you'll, you'll know about these things, you'll know what, what our reasonable thing is. The other thing that was, that was mentioned was, was your uh, proceedings against the designer. Does that have any bearing on, on today? If, if we can find a, something that both parties think is reasonable, we, we, does, does, does that um, interfere with a, a settlement today or is it just something you'll be dealing with separately? It's, 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 it's in the mind of um, the paving, isn't it? So it's loosely linked. Yeah. And, 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 sorry, can I just press you a bit on that? My questions weren't sufficiently clear. Um, you, you, you can reach a settlement today re regardless of that, question number one. And question number two, w would you need to identify any e element of today's settlement for the purpose of, of passing in the, the, a particular uh, element of claim on to the designers? Would that be correct, or am I got that wrong? That right. Yes, you are. Fantastic. Well, um, and, and this is anything more you particularly would like me to have in my mind now. Um, shall I have a word with, with, the, um, with the owners, representatives, and, and see how they're thinking about this? Yeah. And, then, and then come and have another word with you? Yeah, that's fine. Dr. Gooden, thank you very much. first chat um, with the company's representatives um, uh, and I suppose to start with have, have you had any sort of particular thoughts about about things after the opening session this morning or shall I my, my conversation with them was, was, was a confidential one um, but I can with, with that in my mind as it were explore with you um, uh, how, 
how you see the different elements of the frame, but is there anything particular you wanted to, to say to me now that we are in, in private session? Mm -hmm. Well, it seems to be taking a rather robust approach to this at the outset. It's not particularly helpful, but anyway. Um, so are you saying, John, that uh, there isn't been anything that you can bring to us at this stage? No, and I didn't ask for anything okay. to bring to you at this, at this stage. Um, but but we, we have talked about um, a little bit of the background mm -hmm. and, and, and quite a, a bit about the, the, the elements of the, of the frame. And so I'm beginning to, to get a, a feel of... of where they feel particularly strongly, and where you know maybe there's there's, there's more room for, for for some kind of, of, of accommodation. So so and, and this is any different way you'd like to go through it. I think we might just have a look at the frames mm -hmm. uh, one by one. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got the two specific performance um, frames. Mm -hmm. One um, sp specifically in relation to the sliding door and the and the window <coughs> system. Uh, and, and the other one, uh, I think particularly the, uh, the, the, the cracking to the external paving. You heard um, the company solicitor say uh, when they were <coughs> together um, that the contract is the contract, um, and, and, the, and the, you know that they, you got what you what you bargained for in the uh, in those terms. What, what 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 do you say about that in relation to the? the doors and the windows. Okay, I mean, I can I can speak about the contract itself and whether yeah. or not you know things were in the contract, whether or not representations were made, uh, and I think in terms of the representations, perhaps Amanda, I can say something you can talk yeah. about that. Um, so um, you know, we we know what the contract says, but all, also you know in terms of uh, coming to an agreement on where we were, there have been a number of representations made to our to my clients. Um, that my clients have relied upon, and so these are issues uh, that need to, that need to be addressed. In addition, obviously, we have the um, sort of the, the evidence that we will be relying on regarding the poor workmanship. So there's what was promised, and then there were the things that were actually delivered. Um, so, Amanda, do you want to say a little bit, if you don't mind, about yeah. about what was what was actually promised? Yeah, I mean, John, we were promised luxury homes, and that's what we want, and um, we want to enjoy our lives there and we want to feel safe and we uh, you know with the conditions changing all over the world we have reason to feel not safe there really if the workmanship is so bad and it's not rectified and particularly with the windows I think the windows cause us the most concern um, and you know and, and the, picking up on your, your point about paving um, that's just not what was promised we were promised luxury accommodation and that's really what we would like. Thanks. Um, can I be clear, the distinction between those two things, uh, and, 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 and you, you can confirm or deny this, but they, I, I, I was told that there is some work going on on the paving at the, at the moment. So, so that may be something where um, you know, we could find a solution to, to, to that. Well, the, yeah. I mean, work work going on just to fix a bad job is not what we're looking for. We're looking for it to be replaced. We want it replaced. We want it as we were, as we felt we were promised. And, and what's going on, on on the ground at the moment doesn't amount, in your view, to to replacement, to, to, to what no. you, you bargained for. It's, you know, it's a bodge job. Now we're talking about quite a large development, a very luxury development in the Caribbean, um, my clients have, you know, from all over the world have been marketed and promoted. I mean, there's been quite heavy promotion and marketing of, of, of this mm. development. Um, you know, uh, they have spent quite a significant amount of money making promises in glossy magazines and, and the like with vivid sober um, to get people to part with, with their hard-earned cash. I mean, these, for some people, these are retirement properties as well. So there's a lot of emotional investment that's taking place as well. Um, it, uh, it, on top of that, you know, we've got there's there's 40 people out of the you know, uh, I mean that's the majority of the people who purchase apartments that I'm representing at the moment, and so this is not just a one-off, you know, this is a, sort of a catalogue of, of you know errors by the development company. The very fact that they're actually suing their own you know their own um, suppliers as it were and their own sort of 
construction team is quite clear that there's something that's wrong. So, you know, it needs to be put right. And it's quite galling to see them marketing their next development, you know, after hours. And they must be spending lots of money on, you know, marketing luxury apartments and in their ne in their new development when they don't have a finished house. Surely that's galling, Meg. I mean, you know, this is they sort of state it quite clearly. We're a family business, and that's one of the reasons people put their money into into this development is because it's run by a family business. We expect a certain amount of certain type of values, actually, which is what they you know have been sort of representing themselves as having. How, how much of your case really depends on a on a, on a misrepresentation argument um, outside of the, the terms of the of contract and, and uh, is there a legal problem with with with, with that um, um, I forget is, is there a, is there a provision in the contract that says this contracts the whole contract and you can't rely on on representations have you got is there that is there something of a problem there yeah, for we're, you? we're speaking confidentially yes we are press, yeah. so uh, yes of course there's a whole agreement clause in the yeah. contract and um, we will have some difficulty you know between us and between ourselves regarding the representations, the pre-contractual representations and assurances that were made. Um, but at the same time, we do have people willing to give testimony to, to that. So if we do need to put witness statements together to provide that evidence, I wouldn't want to guarantee the outcome of that, if I'm honest, um, but it, you know, it, people will put their name to that and, 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 give, and give those statements. So I don't think that should be underestimated. And another, another thing you mentioned, you mentioned in your opening this morning, the, the third party proceedings, the, the claim mm -hmm. over by the company against the design firm. Mm -hmm. how, you, how much um, can, can you derive from that? Because it's, it would be pretty standard, wouldn't it, to, to protect themselves on the basis that we don't think they're liable to the primary claimants, but if we are, then, then it's the designer's fault, it's the third party. Well, that, it, it, how, how, how much reliance do you place on that? That might be thought of as prudent, prudent behaviour, protecting themselves in case things go wrong. Well, yes. I mean, commercially, if I was acting for them, that's exactly what I would have told them to do. Yes. Um, but obviously, you know, if you look at it from a different point of view, not just the uh, you know, the sort of uh, protective <coughs> way fencing element of it, yeah. you know, obviously that's a concern, and you know, not all concerns, you know, uh, in, in commercial matters are. Financial and legal. Yeah, and actually, in this case, John, we are living with members in the same complex as members of their family. So, you know, it's not just legal, it, it, it does have a very emotional, personal effect because I don't want to live in a place where it's, there's a sort of element of disharmony in the place that we live. I wonder, I wonder what the family members think about the. Problems. Yeah, well, well, it's been a bit awkward there just recently, and we don't want that. You know, we want to live in a place that, you know, it's it, it we're able to move on from here. Well, not move on, stay there. <laughs> understood, understood. Um, l let's look at the other other claims for, mm. for, for a moment. Um, the um, lo losses uh, through not being able to sublet. Um, do, are you concerned by uh, um, their sort of um, remoteness or foreseeability de defence that, that that's not something that they should be responsible for? They they couldn't couldn't have, have known you were going to suffer that particular loss. Well, you know, it depends because it, it depends on the facts and circumstances really. Because some of my clients have purchased these properties and they've been quite clear that they're going to live in them and own them. Uh, and there are other other um, parties, other other clients who have you know, made it quite clear that those were going to be properties that they were going to turn out. Um, so you know, I think we'd have to look at all of those cases on a case by case basis to actually understand what was said outside of that contract. That's a sort of complicating fact of the settlement, isn't it? said in the opening session, you have different arbitrators reaching different answers. Well, that's 
feel that the one insurgency is a kind of more particular case as well, because both all the parties oh, are. Yes. I would argue it's potentially more difficult for them. <coughs> yes, no, I can see. Um, it was the sort of classic thing that the New Age secret says, the shrugging of shoulders at the distress and inconvenience of their claim, that, which is usually thrown in, isn't it? Can't knock this for trying. <laughs> Understood. I mean, this is quite a distressing situation mm. for a number of people. It's not just that a standard commercial contract, property that's going to be rented out, is that you know, it's the, the elements of luxury home for people traveling far to go and retire somewhere or to live somewhere. Um, and you know, the, the difficulties that have arisen. I mean, there is a there is a there is an arguable um, point to be made about the, the level of distress. much to do, too busy a life, and I just want it sorted too, as do the rest of the people behind me, who've got different reasons for uh, you know, wanting this property, as you say, not everyone's going to live there, I'm sure mm. it's going to, there's going to be a range of different uses, but uh, we all want the same standard, and we want this to be resolved. Got it. <laughs> do what I can to help. Thank you. Um, no cost <coughs> figures or interest figures so far. Can you can you provide them? I can get to that, but I haven't been able to for, for this moment. Okay. Um, can I leave that, that yes. with you? Yes, I can find that out. Okay. Yeah, no, we got we, we come to the it's sort of classic situation in any negotiation like this as to uh, who goes first, as it were, who offers a, a compromise of some kind first. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose. I mean, are you keen to put forward a proposal, or would you like me to ask them as the, the, the defendants, the respondents to the claim, to go first? Your claim is your claim. What, what are they prepared to offer, or is there some um, some ideas you, you want me to put forward in terms of how this could get resolved? Uh, you know, given that we'll have to do a compromise if we're going to if we're going to sort it out today. Okay, well, let, let's leave it there so I can keep cr cracking on. Um, I hope you didn't think I rushed you. No, no, but no. If, you, if, you could, if you could give me cost and interest figures. Yes, I can get those for you. That, that would be helpful. While, while we wait. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank Hello again. to um, increasing the specification of the doors and the window position to withstand the categorically encourage change and we said we don't think that was never a good specification so these have been built in accordance with the specification in the contract um, but we'd like to have a little bit more information about that because 
one thing in which we could assist in doing in the town, um, well, increase uh, work on that to try and uh, increase the uh, efficiency of those windows. <coughs> That's helpful, thank you. But this development is certainly different from another development we're doing at Coal Hill. Um, a lot more expensive and it has different specifications so um, I think my client's been very I'm trying to be accommodating if she can but um, I, I always go back to you know what was in the contract and they knew what they were buying um, and, yeah, and, that, and that they're more expensive and obviously yeah. it's a higher specification if it's not yeah. can I just um, have a word about that um, it, it's right that Two points, really. That, 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 um, tell me if I'm wrong. That, that, that these apartments were marketed as, as luxury. So it may be you can have super luxury and you can have more expensive um, uh, setups. Um, but 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 a, a high, a high, except a high, a high standard is is required. Maybe not the highest in the world, but luxury connotes. Um, uh, does it not an expectation of, of, of pretty pretty good quality stuff? I'll leave you with that that thought. The the other the other thought is we definitely pride ourselves on building quality. Yeah, yeah. The, the other point I wanted to make is is it is it is it really um, uncertain that if the, in this. If, if there is a risk of a hurricane, that the, the newly built property should be able to withstand it. Is that a lot to ask? Well, there's never been a Category 3 hurricane on the island, as, as far as I'm aware, there's anything else. No. Oh, I see. It's, it's so a question of degree. Yeah, exactly. My client can only go on <coughs> what's happened historically in their design and uh, building of the, uh, of the apartments and condominiums. Good. Well, that, that, I, I really appreciate what, what you said about that, and I didn't mean to... Um, Churlish in, in asking some more questions about it, um, but you you use the expression repair and then increased work. Um, I, 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 I I sense from from all that's going on that um, the the emphasis by the by the claimants on something I've already <coughs> identified luxury means that a sort of a bodge job isn't isn't what they're looking for um, sort of. Doing some of the bits around the edges, as it were, to use a, a phrase loosely, that 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 they, you know, if 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 for example the windows aren't strong enough, uh, what that do you they mean, need. What do you mean, a bodge job? What do you mean? Well, I, I, well, you use the word repair, and and I think I think what they're looking for, aren't they, in this in the, this element of the claim, replacement. Now, I maybe the, the, that's a distinction without a difference. Um, but oh, we, we would need to be clear what it is you were, I, I, mean, I think it's great, you, you, you're, you're, for my purpose anyway, that you're, you're suggesting something could be done in this respect. But I think the, the language is going to be important, the description well, I'm is going to be. I'm a bit concerned about, you know, bodge job. And I'm saying that they're, you know, they're seeking replacement. Well, I think, I think both in relation to, to the windows and the doors and the, the paving, um, you know there are there are two um, clear uh, you know, different approaches. One is to redo it, and the other is to you know put, put cement in the cracks or whatever it is and try and and, and heal a, a, a problem, put a sticking plaster over the problem. Um, and I just I I I I'm, I'm not being critical of that <coughs> in saying that. I just think it's terribly important that, um, and I'm sure you will be that you're you're clear. To me, when I communicate it to them, or you communicate it directly, how are we going to do it? Um, that that it strikes the right note, um, that because um, you know there's there's quite a bit of emotion, isn't there, on on, on, on their side? You know, um, my home and all that. Um, I, d I just want in taking this forward to be to be to be to be using the language that is most likely to get you a, a deal that. Um, that they'll accept, one that you can live with and they'll accept. Yeah. So anyway, I've said that, but let's come back to it. Um, 
I've already said what I was going to say, sort of indirectly about the about the paving, um, and 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 whether what is being done at the moment will end up with with something um, that, that the all owners, and I suppose it includes the members of your family who live there, will be will be will be happy with, and that it that it is, you know, a luxury finish, uh, rather than. Uh, you know, sticking to the sticking plaster is, is the way I always, that's my expression of being racist. Well, we would want to have, uh, you know, a pub specification and that being spec. I mean, obviously, it is the first thing that you're going to see. Um, <coughs> yes. And for <coughs> the older members of, of the family that have a um, convenience there, they would want that as well. So you're right. Let, let's come back to, to where, where I'm the favourite. <laughs> Apologise for even suggesting it. Um, have you had a, a, a done any thinking about about the, the monetary elements of the claim? I should say I have asked them to come up with with cost figures and yeah. interest calculation, so you know where you where you are on that. But on the on the compensation mm -hmm. claims. Um, is, 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 have you had any thoughts as to what you might be willing to, to, to offer if you're prepared to do something in that respect? I think we, we spoke about the, the two limbs of the, yes. of the investor rental uh, yep. argument uh, and certainly the family who were, who were, who were for, unfortunately to um, uh, live in alternative accommodation yes. yeah. uh, for a number of months and that was what grew to two families I believe, is that right? That's right. Yeah, I think we we would like to look at that um, that particular aspect. Um, Is it just for the family who didn't move in? Yeah, that's right. Clear. Yes. The the but problem, of course, for both on, on in the other room, I've got is is that they are representing different claimants, and 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 to offer claimant A some money for having to, to live somewhere else doesn't do any good for claimant B, who had a separate problem. It's not as if you've got one claimant with two different claims and you say, right, we'll pay the first claim, but we won't pay the second claim. So that's a good compromise. It, it, it doesn't work quite like that uh, here because, as I say, what what, what A gets doesn't, isn't, isn't of any interest to what B is claiming, or to B, who isn't, isn't getting any. <coughs> oh, well, that was their problem in, I guess, in representing all of the owners. Yeah. Although it's yes. that, that we're bringing them all together. Um, but, you know, I have much more difficulty with uh, the investor claims than I do with Of course, they're I suppose this business about the a multiplicity of claimants and, and these several arbitrations is a sort of a nuisance for both sides, isn't it? I mean, it uh, you, you could end up with funny results, different results. Um, you're fighting lots of fires, and and they've come today trying to corral, no doubt. Um, uh, not necessarily cats in a bag, but people with different claims and different, um, you know, different approaches to the, the problem. So it's desirable for, for, for both of you, I would have thought, to be, to be shot at this if you can because of, of that additional uh, complexity. This is a claim A versus B, and you know, you, you, B can settle at somewhere south of, of 100%. What? Sorry, it was yeah. a ramble, but you, you, yeah, you, 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 you get the point, I think. I think you're certainly right, John. <coughs> I think our, our position is that, yes, these arbitrations are ongoing, um, but we won't be bullied by any of the other side um, into just doing away with, with the issues because they have their points of view quite clearly. We have our points of view, and like um, Mr. Winsome and I have said before, um, the company's very reputable in 
the island. Um, so obviously the ideal is to settle today, but yeah. um, if we can't, uh, then we're not afraid of proceeding to arbitration, which seems a point hard. That's, that's fine. Well, what I think I'd, I'd really like to re um, really appreciate the thought you've given to the, the, the claims and, and, and um, where, you, you might, where you're more flexible and, and where, where you're not. What I think I'd really like to do is be able to put a really a, a completely clear a, a sort of definitive proposal to them, for them to, to think about and, and say yes, no, or, 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 or maybe. Uh, and, and I would, and I don't know whether we could do that, we could work that out together now, or, or, whether, you, or whether you want to have another private um, conversation without me to get there. And I should say, I, I readily accept you would be saying, well, we're not doing anything about costs or interest. If you give us some figures, we'll look at them and, and take a, a view about, about that. But I, I, it, I think in terms of efficiency and, and, and getting on with a fairly late in the day now, it would be, it would be good to have a, 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 a clear package. Um, do, you, do you feel you, you would be able to define for me exactly what you're proposing um, in relation to to performance claims, specific performance claims. Um, I've understood that you're going to say we're not doing anything for the investment claims, um, and, but, uh, but it would be good to have a figure uh, for the, for the um, non-occupation claims. Do you need a, a, a few minutes together to, to work that out, or are you, are you able to do that? We would need a few minutes on um, <coughs> some of the rules, but maybe Wisdom, I don't think there's any harm in you mentioning to John about the, the, the terracotta paving point that, that we discussed at the end. Yeah. Except there was, there was one aspect um, of the second part of this uh, performance claim that I didn't quite understand. It said that we should take uh, make improvements to the I understand the uh, external paving and the cracking. Is it one of the terracotta same thing? paving and tiles? I, I, I can see that we could do something about that. As I've already said, that, that is uh, the first impression that comes yep. We do want yep. that to be of good quality and will affect um, the sale. But I, there's an aspect that I don't understand. And Okay, can, can I be clear what the unclarity uh, is? Well, it said I mean, my, my, my... Improvements to construction or damages. And then it goes on to talk about the um, external paving. The question, the external aren't, aren't, paving, we fine. Can, we will address. Okay. Aren't they simply saying, uh, but I'll, I will double check with them, that, that uh, put that right, put that uh, uh, in, in a proper um, uh, state, if you don't, I suppose this is true, isn't it, of all specific performance claims. If, if you don't perform, then our alternative fallback remedy is, is money. So we can put it right. But I will double check that. But, but I, 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 un I understand that. You okay, just said, said something about improvements to construction. So I, whether that's in relation to okay, I would, the I would external check. paving. I've got it. I've got it now. If that yes. is the case, yes. that's fine. Yes. We can address that. But if it's something else. Thank you. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Going back to where I was, what I'd really like to 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 work out w with you, um, hear from you, so that I can I can pass it on, it, it is uh, in terms the the proposal, and that will now be subject to two things. One is uh, an offer is being made in relation to the terracotta uh, paving. Yep on the basis that that is what is meant by improvements. If improvements means anything else, you don't know what they're talking about. And the second uh, subject to is, is, is costs and, and, and interest. You're not interested in, in, in them until they can, they can tell you what, what, what's being talked about. Right. Would, would you, do you want just a couple of, of, of minutes on your own to formulate that? And, and I'd urge you, um, I would, wouldn't I, as the mediator, to, to be as forthcoming and, and wholesome as you can about the, 
um, the windows and the doors and the paving to, to make them comfortable. You'll go only go so as far as you want to go, but but bearing in mind what what I was uh, talking about. Uh, I won't use the word bodge job again because I don't want to upset you. But between replacement and repair, is it? Are you gonna are you gonna start again on the windows? If I'm asking the right question, are you going to start again on the paving, uh, or, or, or what exactly is proposed? Can you help me on that? Do you want to just have have a, a couple of minutes without without me to, to do that? Okay. Well, I don't think you need to leave. Uh, we'll just go to the other side of the room, and I'll I'll do a crossword or something, and not listen. see you again. So who's going to tell me what the, the proposal is? So in terms of the uh, sliding doors and windows, mm. what we are talking about there is upgrades, but not replacement, to replace it would be <coughs> Things they're looking for is a specification of the Coral Hill type condominium, having not paid the price of the Coral Hill condominium. So um, uh, uh, we might we might do that, but they might have to make a contribution if they want that sort of specification. You remind me that other development is called Coral. Coral Short hand for it. We're clearer on. Yeah. On what we would be prepared to uh, replace the character paving parts. Yeah. Um, What's your information on? I don't actually know where we'd have to arbitrate it. Yeah. Because we would be released. Would be bad. Yeah. So I think on balance we're quite confident on that one. So that's my client. Okay. Yeah. The gesture of goodwill. Thank you. And then, and then claim three, um, is, is your position still that, that you're not having any indemnification of maintenance costs? Or uh, where are you on that? Well, we did discuss that, didn't we, Winston? And, and to undertake £1,000 per apartment per year, um, it's a very low amount for the sort of development. Um, but they've not said, I mean, so 
per year, is that in perpetuity? I mean, how long are they expecting to just pay a thousand uh, per annum for, for the uh, services? Obviously, the rates of cost rise every year, and yep. based on that sort of thing, there's got to be some sort of. But you would, you, would, you might live with that for a, for a, for a limited period. I don't know about that amount, but um, certainly something we we, we have discussed and, and could potentially work. Yeah, we might prepare to increase that. Yeah, it could, yeah. We discussed if the cap was increased. Do you want me to put forward a figure, or do you want me to just put it forward in, in, in the way you? Given how late we are in the day, I'd be keen for you to uh, uh, move as much as you feel able to move. And then uh, item four in the claim um, is. This is the rental, isn't it? This is the rental. No, this is the this is the accommodation. This is the alternative. Yes, yeah. the loss of rental is five. So alternative accommodation is four. Alternative accommodation, you were sympathetic towards. Oh, yeah. So that's three owners that's only. Three owners, so they're looking for what? Uh, if my maths 18, is right, 18,000 18, 18, each. each. Can I tell them that, that you, you, you are minded to, to, to offer a figure, but you're just thinking about what it should be? Do you want to be happy with that with someone? You don't see any problem with that? Just move matters along? Yeah. And perhaps when I end talking to them, you, you could be thinking a bit more about that, so you can, you can tell me the figure. And also if you'd ask them to come up with a, another figure. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I, yeah. I, I think that's appropriate to ask them to come up with a different figure is bidding against themselves. So let, let's let's ask. Um, very good. Um, and and then five is the investment loss. Do you, do you want to offer something in that regard? I'm quite confident that we're not screwed on the nose or anything. Doing what my brief tells me to do. Jolly good. Um, and I've talked about costs and interest. I, w I want to just come back and excuse me for having to to the first item. What exactly an upgrade means? It, 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 because it's not quite enough for me to say this isn't Coral Hills. This isn't that level. But they'll want to know what, how it is defined. They want to know what they're going to be getting. Um, by way of an uplift from what they've, they've currently got. I mean, is there, a, is there a spec that can be defined by reference to some uh, tome that 
schemes with Windows specifications. Well, I don't either, and I, I don't know whether they will. Yeah. So they will need some help I in knowing that what. You can, um, you can improve field or raise the replacement of raising part of the. If you're not taking out the whole of the Windows install, you might have to be able to do something in terms of reinforcing. So not the frames, might be but, able to do but in terms of reinforcing. Gla glass and, and, and putty. Yeah, and seals. Seals. So that Okay. Well, I'm sure you all understand they'll, they'll want as much um, specificity as, as can be possible. But let me, let me put that to them now while you're giving a bit of a thought to, to the figure in item four. So the, in, in terms of, of, of a deal today, if, the, if there is one, it would be a promise to, to look into it. The number of why is that sort of an agreement to an agree, yeah. and we might, we might we won't have finality today in that way. Mm -hmm. um, the best you'd have is sort of heads of terms that will need, various things will need to be done before they can become sufficiently clear to become an agreement. But, and of course, I can't in all honesty advise my client to say yes we will do that and seal it and that what if two drops get in they'll say well that's not good enough is it um she the company does need to test okay what's okay. there if that's the position yeah. okay would you excuse me if i do rush off to the other room now to to, to make that uh, an offer to send it as an offer uh, and we'll see what where, where we get with that okay thank you very much indeed and if you could go on thinking about these things, if you are able to refine them or add any more specifics, that would be that would be invaluable. Thank you. How much longer have I got? Ten minutes. Great temptation to have a club biscuit tonight and keep going for another ten minutes. How we have it? Sorry to have kept you waiting, but uh, it has been uh, profitable, I think, having a long chat oh, with them. Good, because we seem to think that they're using a little bit more air time than us today. Well, you mustn't worry about that. Okay. It just meant there was, there was more to talk about to get to where I've, I've got to. Mm -hmm. um, and because we're short of time now, I'm not going to run through some of the arguments they've made as to why they shouldn't be mm. um, con conceding things, because mm -hmm. they are prepared to make some concessions. Um, and I want to tell you them and give you a chance to, to think about them and, and, and see whether they are the, the basis for, for an agreement. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if, if we take your uh, claim numbers okay. on the document I'm looking anyway, mm -hmm. one to seven, yep. as far as one is concerned, they accept that they're, for today's purposes, uh, without prejudice and all that, uh, that there is room for improvement mm -hmm. uh, and that they would be willing to uh, provide uh, what they called an upgrade uh, um, and I'll explain how we get to that as best I can they, they, they say you may have in your mind I don't know whether you do or not another development they're, they've done or they're doing called Coral Hills yeah. which is different it is of a higher standard and more expensive and so it, that's not comparing uh, like with like um, but, but they do recognize something needs to be done mm -hmm. and the, the problem for today's purposes and, and I'm not be able to get any, any further than this and may not be able to get any further than this they say they need to carry out some tests 
uh, on, on, on empty uh, apartments, uh, and they're thinking in terms of the strength of the, of, of the glass, the glazing, and the strength of the seals. Um, but, 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 but as of the moment, that is sort of unfinished business. They're, they're not offering anything specific. I, I did say, can you define what it is you, you do new? I'm not an expert in, in windows, and I don't think you are either. Um, but 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 they they as far as I could take it was that they would 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 go away and do some tests and come up with what they considered would be a significant improvement um, in terms of security from storms and safety and all that sort of stuff. Now, can we just leave, you come back to it? I I, I know that that isn't. Um, uh, 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 um, specific enough for, for, for uh, an, an agreement today. Uh, item two, provided that they, their understanding is correct, that when in one part of your claim you talk about improvements, and in another part you talk more specifically about uh, the, 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 the cracking in the terracotta <coughs> paving tiles, that they are one and the same thing, and that in, there isn't something else, uh, they would uh, re replace the flat tile. They recognise that, for today's purposes anyway, that that's sort of um, um, in, important for the development is what you see first when you, when you get there and all that, and that that needs to be redone. Thirdly, um, they're pretty unkeen on, 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 a, on an indemnity at all in relation to maintenance, mm -hmm. but what they would be prepared to offer uh, would be a cap of $1,750,000. Mm -hmm. uh, and they'd do that for just one year. It wouldn't be forever. <laughs> it would be for a year. Uh, as far as claim four is concerned, which are the three owners who ha had to find alternative accommodation, uh, they would like to know, see some evidence of the uh, 54,000, which um, uh, they calculated 18 times three. They think it's too high. They would be prepared to, to offer an, an amount, uh, but before they, they make an offer, they do want to see your, your evidence for 54 and mm -hmm. reflect on, on that. Um, Um, uh, nothing is offered for, for claim six. Um, sorry, nothing is offered for claim five. They, they're confident that's, they say, too, too remote. Yeah, yeah. Not, not foreseeable, not recoverable as a matter of contract. Yeah. Nothing for distress and inconvenience, which they think are make weights. Uh, they would look at costs and interest if you can provide the figures that I, I, I mentioned before. Um, yeah, I think that covers the, the seven claims. I can see why you've taken so long to get here. It must have been quite a difficult uh, conversation. Um, so uh, this is not really where we want to be no. at this stage, um, if I'm honest. Um, I think we've made quite a lot of progress, haven't we, on the specific performance things. I, I know item one isn't isn't definite, and I did ask them to go away and see whether they could be more definite, but I don't know whether that's achievable. But you've got an in principle acknowledgement that that that, that 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 there needs to be something better. Yeah, the difficulty with this, John, is that the windows and doors, I mean, we're in the middle of a very tricky season uh, at the moment, and you know these doors and windows are leaking. Going to be quite difficult to deal with insurance claims um, if we continue to let this go unattended as well. And so to say that we're going to carry out some tests is all very woolly, and you know it doesn't give my client, it doesn't give me an answer. No, it's not good enough. Yeah. So and, and that was one thing that we needed to be done ASAP. Mm. Really, uh, as with everything, you know, that is physical damage that's happening on a daily basis. Everything else is primarily funds and money and movement of movement of money but this is inconvenience okay the, 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 I, 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 I can certainly 
and tell them about the the, the urgency. I suppose uh, I, I, I entirely get the point that it's it's an ongoing problem. It mm. could it could get worse. It could it, 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 it's 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 the wrong time of the year for this to be uh, to be happening. But the, but 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 the other side of the coin, the problem you've got mm. is that. The alternative of getting an order from a, an arbitrator isn't going to be quick, is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, 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 I will urge them to, to move quickly on that and to get to a resolution. But if something is on offer, is it not right that it's it's better than an arbitration claim? Well, we have agreed yeah. to stay the proceedings, I think, right? So, so we've got quite a significant amount of time yeah. yes. uh, to, to get through. But it, I mean, this is urgent. So okay. it, it would demonstrate uh, you know, a great deal of goodwill on their part if they want to progress further with the other with the other heads of town, if they can you know get their skills. I've, I've got it. I've got it. Okay. Um, maintenance. I'd like to. Uh, I mean, there are quite there are a number here of, of different elements, and I don't think we're in agreement on any of them really. I mean, the paving's great. Yes, yeah, that's all right. Do it. Yeah, that's yep. great. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's in their best interest to do it because they can't sell the rest of the ten flats if it looks the way it yeah, looks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but, but they do agree, so that that that's not an issue. Yeah. Um, and then they've 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 agreed to a, a slightly different cap, but but only for a, a short period. Um, and I, I I've got no idea what the right amount well, is. Well, I'm not happy but, with that. Okay, I don't understand that. I was just going to say I completely understand that you made something to say on amount. I can I can see the point that maybe it shouldn't be indefinite. That, that, that there should be a, a time period for that. For that to go on forever is 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 is, is perhaps not a, a bad point mm. for them to make. Yeah, I mean on the on the cap, you know, we've got the work's been done below a reasonable standard. We have an expert opinion that we would be relying on. So you know that puts us in in a pretty good stead. So uh, you know that's something that you could share with me, um, but we, I think we'd be minded to agree a time frame, a limitation period for the work. Yeah, I, I can see that. I mean, I can see a time frame, but a year, given the the uncertainty over the other elements of the maintenance, yeah, a year is a really short time, particularly if there still is vagueness about the windows and so on. I think a you know a time cap would be reasonable, but a year is not enough. Are you agreeing to the figure, or do you want to? No. Well, I mean, I would like that figure absolutely, the one seven five zero for six years. But given that they're offering that for one year, I think it's probably unlikely that they would they would be happy to accept it at that point. Mm. But uh, should we should we try it? We've got that clear. Okay, if you can. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can we park that because the other claims are quite a, a bit more significant, I think, in, in, in terms of yeah. what we might want to do. Yeah. Okay. So we. Windows and doors, we're going to try and press them for time frame. Yes, urgency. Paving, we've agreed. Done. Uh, rental costs, right, so we have evidence of those rental costs. Uh, okay, um, if you could let me have them. Yes, yeah, so I've got those figures. Okay. I, have, I have those sent over. Um, so here we go. Those are the rental costs. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so you just put that forward. I will do. Discuss it I will do. And, and I expect what they will do is make it a council proposal. <coughs> Take that on board I, I when expect, they do. I expect that. Okay. Um, loss of income. Right. This is potentially the largest head. <laughs> okay. So we have a claim. Our the claim from those various individual investors amounts in aggregate to up four hundred and twenty thousand pounds. I think that they should be expecting a hike, a hike at that point. I understand what they say about remoteness. Um, but I think in terms of those of the investors also are willing to give testimony regarding the two contractual you know, insurances that they've hired and, and you know, also what they were planning to do with those properties in terms of renting them out. And I think that, Amanda, I don't know, I think you'd be quite hard pressed to say that they'll walk away when they've done mm. that. Yeah. Might that be something that, that you would think about? Making your own. I mean, 
they, they've said no, nothing doing. Um, but might you tell, and, and you, you reject that and say that yeah. might, might, might it be appropriate to ask you to think whether you would you would offer your own compromise there so to keep that that's that settlement ball rolling. Okay, well why don't we look at that yeah. and, 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 the, and the last head really, which is the, uh, the damages and costs and so on. So currently we've got a calculation on that of what, are we talking about costs now? Yeah. calculations and so on on those on those sums which obviously will need to be amended if the, if the figures change yes what, 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 what rate are you applying is, is, that, is that something I can eight, tell them eight percent, eight percent. Yeah. it's a judgment rate exactly they're so going to say that's too high aren't well they? of course they are but you know that's 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 the, the rate that we would be seeking if we were, if we were going down that, that route and, and your cost figure and the cost figure on that is I mean it's it's two hundred fifty thousand pounds of legal cost so far I'd expect it to go up to half a million because we've got Dealing with arbitration, so we need to think about that. We've got 40 people on our side, you know. Um, but but the cost to date is a quarter of a million. Yes. So, you know, everyone has to be mindful of what that's going to look like going forward. And we do need a contribution to cost. I mean, this, this is a significant inconvenience for 40 people um, who have been put in this unfortunate position of having to take legal advice. Yeah. And I, I, it, the principle is. Well, look, so, so I'm going to urge uh, on them some, some urgency from item one. Item two is in the bag. Item three, you asked me to park. But, but can I say to them that you, you, you would think about a, a period, but it's, it's longer than a year, and that, and that you, you would think about an, an amount, if we could find some figure between 1,000 and, and, and 1.75. Yeah, if, you could, if you could tell them 1.75 over six years and see what they come back with. Okay. Um, uh, uh, the ball is in there, going to be in their court for the 54,000 um, and, and, and I'd like you to think whether you could make a, a sort of a further proposal on the, uh, on the figure that's currently 480,000. Okay. Okay. All right, thank well, you very much. is bleeding. I don't know whether that means we've ended or whether he's going to tell you we've finished or what. I think we have run out of time. Um, if we can have some, some questions, I think that's what the plan is. is an opportunity now we're going to we're going to wrap up in a little while but because there's another lecture that's going to be coming in at about 10 to 6 but um thank you very much john and parties uh excellent um questions any questions any comments yes if you could just introduce yourself for everyone to know um i'm uh, abigail day a former city solicitor and newly accredited uh, mediator um john i was very interested to see that um you work through the heads of claim uh, as a list. When would you be tempted to suggest a global figure if parties are saying, I'll give you something for that one, nothing for that one? You, the, the question's quite right. You, you, I think it does work in stages. Um, the problem here is we've got some non-monetary claims, and so the whole thing can't be done as a, as a, as a number. But, but, but quite often, parties, uh, get there before the mediator does, as, as it were, you have some reasoned negotiating. Okay, well, my, my 100 pound claim, because of this and because of that, I make it 90 pounds. And then the other lot say, well, so and so and so and so, 25 pounds. And that salami slice <coughs> goes on a bit. And then it, people give up and they say, well, you know, t tell him we'll take 60. 
you know, and then you, you just move sort of naturally into a, a global amount, which you're quite right, is, is what it's really all about. It's how much uh, money, you know, one party's got to pay to another if, it, if we're talking about money. Chat from Brick Court. Uh, I suppose the obvious question, and, and mediators, the obvious question is what was the mediator's thinking to effectively run that mediation in quite a corporate caucus as opposed to ventilate some of those issues in joint? Was there some sort of, um, is that how it unfolded or did you have a plan? I, I think, I think it, it was partly to do with the artificiality of, 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 of the, the sort of mock mediation because I didn't have, uh, for the day, I didn't have uh, very long. Um, and I think pro pro provided, I, I'm, I'm all in favour of parties staying together if they are arguing about the law or arguing about the facts because they'll argue much better than I can possibly do um, going from room to room giving sort of second-hand versions of what the arguments are. And so I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm all for an extended plenary session or a re regathering for, for those sort of conversations. But if, as, as I did here, because of the shortage of time, really, um, and, and, and the parties said they, they indicated early on they were happy with that, moved really straight to negotiating. I think the negotiating is generally at best done, as you'll know, in, in, in the caucuses. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Are you carried the words that the job? Do you have any reflections on that? It caused a, a reaction, didn't, didn't, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> I might have been safer sticking to replacement and repair. Um, but, it, but it flushed something out. I don't know whether I did it consciously. It was a, it was a word I had in my mind, because you all have heard sometimes I use my own language, uh, and sometimes I did use the language that the parties were, 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 were using. Um, and I think if I'm completely honest, uh, you know, it, it's largely subconscious. That wasn't by design, and I don't think it. I don't think it did did too much harm. John, I've got a question. Mm -hmm. We've got some very newly qualified mediators in the audience um, who are training with us in the summer of seventeen. Um, would you recommend having a joint session after the plenary if you're inexperienced, or is it safe to go into a private session and then when you feel more comfortable with a bit of a spring spring on top? I, I think I'm accurate in saying that, and, and, and Jeff and the other experienced mediators here may be sort of braver than, than, than I am. I, I, I'm all for the, the first plenary session going on a bit, and I'm, I don't mind them arguing or getting a bit cross even, if, if, if that's a useful way of getting stuff out, and, and we all know where, where it is. Um, I very rarely bring the parties back together again. Very, very rarely, because it seems to me once, picking up a, an earlier answer, once you get into the, the negotiating, yeah. the, the crude negotiating, it's, it's better done um, uh, in, 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 in the caucuses. Um, if there are difficult issues um, uh, uh, and sort of legal stuff and you go back to, it seems a blockage to the negotiating, then that, of course, is an option to have the lawyers together or to have everybody back together. But you know, when I suggest that to parties, because it, it's, a, it's a, a suggestion for sort of moving it along, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, the, the reaction is normally, no, we don't particularly want to go back together. There'll only be a lot of good lawyers arguing with each other. No, they're not going to change their minds. Or, um, so I don't do it all that much, and, but maybe that's cowardice. Can I ask a question, John? If you had a longer period of time, yeah. would you delve a bit more into the personal relationships and the background of the company, for example? Because in, a, in our brief, um, the company, three generational company, and the, the I guess the elder statesman in the company, the elder members of the family would like us to have gone away and, and yes. dealt with, but then you get somebody like me as lawyer, so, you know, the contract's the contract, that's what it is, and then we started talking about money. Um, yes. So maybe that human element, would you? Yes, like uh, no, uh, of stuff? course. Um, uh, um, uh, I mean, two, two points. Whether in a in a in a different in a, in a more real situation, uh, the people you're talking about, the family and some of the other owners, would be there. Then I I think I think one of the really important ingredients, state of the obvious, really, 
uh, of a mediation is the, is the relationship that the, the mediator does build up with everybody at a mediation, whether client, whether lawyer, whether witness or expert or whatever, whatever it is. And so yes, yes of course, um, with more time, that, that would be important. Nick Pearson, I'm a mediator and I've had the honour of doing my mediation training with John, so it's <coughs> nice to hear him again. Um, on that last question about a, a joint plenary session, it's one of the hardest things I think to deal with as a, a new mediator. The problem with plenary sessions by and large is that the parties can grandstand a lot. The solicitors will always argue that their case was 100% right or defensive or aggressive, and it's very difficult to get them to change their mind. And if the clients attending are the clients who were involved in the dispute, they're either going to be defensive or aggressive and not really able to act even-handedly. So what I try and do, and I suspect John does this as well, and I learned it from him, is by talking to the solicitors beforehand, really try and work out what the best type of session to have will be and get the solicitors on board thinking about who are the right people to come along, is it going to be something where you can have a long session and get the facts all out and understood and then split off for private sessions, or is it just going to be, as John had it today, a relatively formalistic opening session uh, and then moving into private sessions? This is a hard thing to judge, but talking beforehand before the mediation starts might give you a steer about the right thing to do. It, 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 it is vitally important part of the process, uh, just as Nick says, that I, I, mean, I, I, I manage this, but, but I don't manage any more normally, and that is the telephone conversation after you've read the, the papers with usually the solicitors, but, but sometimes the clients want to be involved, um, uh, uh, about the process. Uh, and, 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 and I will always ask open questions, are you, are you comfortable having a plenary session? Uh, what do you want to do in that plenary session? Do you want to make a speech? Who wants to make a speech? Uh, and as Nick says, exploring who's, who's going to be there. Um, and, and of course, we didn't have time for that t t t today. That all had to be taken as read. But it, but it, is, it is a very important part of the process. And it's that, that conversation, it, you can hear from the solicitor, you know, how much somebody hates somebody in the story. Um, and, and, and how much sort of, personal animus there is so you can you can handle that and not go into it blind and, and be and be put off by it by it. Last question? Two if you're thinking two this one and then you'll say yes one is just in regards to the solicitors, how do you balance three being a solicitor and mediator? How would you justify to a company that they should let you do mediation rather than being a solicitor? Well John's oh, also John's a solicitor mediator as well. Yeah, but that, you know, I'm, I'm in a different position because yeah. I've been doing it all so long. My, my firm does what I tell them. <laughs> so, I'm not That's everybody's true. in that lovely position. Yeah. Our particular role here was to represent the clients. So we weren't as a mediator, and even though we are mediators in real life. I think that's the question, though. Is that the question? Yeah, is it how do you do the mediation? Yeah. Just because I was a mediator, my firm has said it's unlikely that they're going to let me do mediation over being a solicitor in this situation. How would you? I've not come across it in practice, I have to say, but I, I think it's. Be really, we'd be really successful as to earn them so much money that, that, that they haven't got an answer to you saying, I'm taking a, a day off every now and then to be mediated. Sorry, I don't know what your name is. Uh, oh, sorry, Natasha. Natasha. Natasha, just a few hours ago, um, where we live, which is within Hardwick's building, there was a, a wonderful lunch. And they have a young barrister who um, was uh, finished Chief Business about 12 months ago. But in his second six months, he managed to represent parties in a mediation. And one of the reasons he got the, the brief was because he'd qualified as a mediator as well. Now, he knows that the chance of becoming an actual mediator and taking on those cases will take a little bit longer, because as you're a trainee too. But the idea of being able to represent parties and understand the process and understand what the mediator is trying to do when they're asking you to break for caucus or do certain reflective thinking about a particular case or point that adds uh, invaluable um, uh, sort of currency to the way in which you're going to be able to go back to your firm and your clients and say, well, I know what's going on in the mediation. Um, so I think there's a balance between you being the mediator, but also being a party to represent in mediation. 
and it depends on when you can. If you do community mediation, which many people in this room do, you can do it after hours. So hopefully it won't hurt. If I may, Ronnie, it's, it's an interesting point because I think there's a deeper element to this. So I'm a, a corporate solicitor and I've been practicing for a number of years and I started well, Rohini Training uh, about eight years ago. So I, I, I trained uh, and became a mediator then. I'm a better corporate solicitor now than I've ever been due to that training and due to that ability to resolve conflict, especially at shareholder and board level, in my commercial work. So I recommend, I can't recommend it enough. I'd echo that actually, I'm a commercial real estate lawyer uh, day to day, and um, I was just telling somebody yesterday actually, I said, being, being an accredited mediator has made me a better lawyer. Because and that's what I'm you've got to tell your firm, <laughs> yeah. you're all, you're all, um, you you'll mean, bring new <laughs> skills to the well. job by being yeah. a practice. <laughs> Well, no, and a lot of uh, BPP, one of the schools where we do the training for bar students who pass the course and can come and do our training, and a lot of chambers are now looking for that extra qualification. They know mm -hmm. that they're not going to become mediators overnight. Of course, they're not, and it takes a time to, to practice in that. But having that under your under your belt really does make a big difference. And and chambers are now saying we're looking for that because these students are potentially going to be able to add several thousand pounds worth of education back into their practice in um, a very short amount of time. So um, we had last one more question there, sir. Oh, thank you. Um, yes, Peter Savory, I'm a bar student here, and I've already got Yes, you are, yes. Thank you. Um, I'm just interested in the preparatory session before something we've looked at today as to whether the mediator might look at the list of claims and perhaps even edit them, because what concerned me during this is there was a lot of focus about three owners that didn't get to move in on time. And in the concept of, you know, I'll give you something and you give me something, that's a really easy win for the developers, but in fact they're only keeping three people happy. And whereas virtually all the other claims are either all the owners or a large chunk of the owners. It just sat a little bit uneasily with me that you've got a lot of big issues and you've got one tiny little thing that affects only three people. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. exactly. Yes. Focus can go from one to the other very, very quickly. So I wonder whether in real life somebody might sit down with the mediator and say, "Look, that thing is we should take it out of today's proceedings, deal with it as a separate item, and look at the big issues." That the, 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 the trouble is that there was one person here representing everybody, mm -hmm. and it would have put her probably in a, a difficult position to, to ring. What? You know, maybe she could have rung up the, 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 the three and said, I've got an offer for you. Do you want to take it? But, um, and and, 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 the, and the, the defendants might have been prepared to, so suppose, you know, perhaps towards the end of the day when, when an overall settlement wasn't going to be achieved, just picking off that claim, it's quite possible, um, but, but always difficult um, to, 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 to manage. I think you did pick up on that as well, John. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that, that was part of the thing saying, did we have authority to actually settle? <coughs> and, and they were saying Amanda did have authority to settle on behalf mm. of the other owners. And we were saying, well, you know, we've, we've got 40 claims. So I was like, well, I'm really pleased that um, she would have authority to settle for the other owners as well, because they were potentially. <coughs> and that, I think that's something we would have to establish. Early on, that, early on, that you know the people there do have authority to be able to actually uh, settle. So I'm going to um, wrap up now, but all of the, all of our guests here will be outside. You can speak to them offline or, or connect and, and network with them as well. So I want to say a very big thank you to all of you for coming and to uh, mediators and or all mediators and John mediating this mediation. <laughs> um, for those of you that are watching online, we had something in the region of 500 people watching. Um, so well done to all of you, it's uh, excellent, great comments. Um, and if you want to watch the simulation again or parts of it, it will go onto YouTube by the weekend and it's on our Facebook uh, page as well. But I wanted to um, hand to each one of you uh, a very small token of our appreciation uh, and thank you very much. John, you first of all. Thank and you. Thank you. Thank you. To Liz R. N. Winston for uh, Outstanding uh, <laughs> and to great, to, to great, to great owners of the uh, of the property, Amanda and Sean. But Amanda's birthday, so I'll a big happy birthday to Amanda. Oh, thank you. Thank you all of you.
you and we'll see you outside just over there. We need to empty quite quickly.